Hello there, um, another video about Clojure. Today I called it uh, Tricky Functions. In reality, they are not that hard to work with or understand. It just uh, could be a bit tricky for beginners, especially if you come from other languages that, that don't have uh, similar functions uh, to start uh, using them. And it could be a bit scary if you see that first time in your code and uh, you kind of don't understand what's going on. So the goal of the uh, video is to go through uh, four or five functions like that, uh, discuss their use cases, and provide some examples. So let's start with um, a simple one and not so commonly used, and it is identity. So if we call identity one, we get one. If we pass something else, like a string, it returns the string. And from the name of the function, you can already understand that it returns that it gets. And there is a brilliant implementation that uh, we get an argument x and we return the same argument. Uh, it could be a bit tricky to provide good use cases for that. Uh, but one of them is, for example, want to filter an array where we have nil and false. And uh, we only want to return like a truthy value. So we can use identity in the filter. So it will filter out nil and false um, because in filter, the predicate um, should be a truthy value. So if we execute that, we see that we have uh, everything except nil and false. And also imagine uh, you have a function that takes in a function and the value, and yet then you somewhere apply this function to the value. And usually you call it with some uh, function that doing something, like increment one. So here we have two. Um, but for example, in test or somewhere else, you want to override this function to something that doesn't change the value. And in this case, identity could be a good uh, candidate to use. So here we will have one as the result. Um, the limitation of that is obviously that uh, it's like a single arity function. So you cannot uh, use it for something that takes two or three or more arguments. Okay, let's not waste too much time on identity and move next to constantly. Uh, again, a really nice implementation here, but as you can see, uh, we're now uh, returning a function uh, from our fu constantly function, and this value that we provide is always returned from this function. But the interesting part is here that we have a var args, and we kind of always ignore them. So the idea of constantly is that it returns a function that takes any num number of arguments, but always returns the value that we provide. Uh, could be hard to understand from that description even, but when we check this thing, so constantly true, as you can see, it returns a function, uh, not the value. And then we can call this function. So uh, this double uh, parenthesis here saying that we will call the function that's result of this as expression. So result of this uh, will be true, as you can see here. Uh, and also you can... Uh, um, do something like uh, always true and then do constantly uh, true and in this case it could be a bit easier to read because we're now just calling this uh, new function always true and the thing is that we can pass any number of arguments here as you can see it works with any number of arguments we always get the value if we call it something like always 10 and we pass 10 here and let's rename it here you got that idea we're always getting the the value so here um, example that we can use any number of arguments as we already discussed and then um, this could uh, could be hard to understand what's going on but actually this thing returns a function that always returns one, and this thing returns the function um, always uh, returns the function that's the result of this. So at the end, when we call it, we'll get one. But yeah, I would be really surprised to see something like that in in a real code. It just um, I wanted to provide an example uh, to show you how. Hard it, it could be sometimes to understand code like this. Um, but constantly is really useful. Uh, and also, it's uh, sometimes it's useful in tests, 
sometimes useful even in uh, some code. Uh, and again, we have some logic, uh, we pass a function and the value, and then we use that result of that function on top of the value as a part of the condition, and then we have these branches, yes and no. And if we uh, provide positive one, and uh, this will result in yes, uh, but also if we always want this condition to be false or true, we can pass a constantly true or constantly false here, and the result uh, will be always one of the branches. So yeah, probably you can see some, some use cases in your code for that. And as I said, uh, in tests, uh, in overriding this behavior, that could be quite useful. Next one, uh, a really easy to understand, I think, is a complement. And if we go to description, it says that um, it will basically return the opposite truth value of the result of uh, the original function. So if zero of zero returns true, a uh, function that results of complement zero will return true uh, false for the same value. So here we have false uh, because this function is basically a negative to, to the original function. And here's an example how to use that in the filter. So what we want to filter here is everything that's not zero. So we do complement zero and run it as a filter predicate. And the result is three, two, one without the final zero. Cool. Um, moving next, we have uh, partial, and I kind of really enjoy using that function usually. And the idea of the function is that you can uh, reduce the rarity of your function uh, without changing the signature of the function, and you can provide some defaults for uh, for the arguments. Idea here is we have this add function that takes two arguments x and y, and we just sum those two. So this will be 3. Uh, but then let's say we want to create a function based on our add that we always add 2. So what we can do is we can call partial add and then 2 here. So this will be a result of kind of creating a new function uh, that only uh, now takes this last argument and they always uh, x is always 2. So add 2 of 4 will be 6. And here, the, the other example, uh, we without our custom add function, but with just plus. So uh, the plus operator can take multiple uh, arguments. It's like a var arc. So if we do uh, 1, 2, 3, we have this. But partial to partial plus 2 will result in a function that will always add 2. And now, if we have this function, we can do um, 2, and it will be 4, but also this will work with um, var arcs as well, because we only over, uh, like created the default for the first um, argument in the signature of the function. One of the use cases of partial, um, again, probably in tests, but uh, I've seen partial in uh, code as well, a lot. Uh, so let's say you have a function that do an HTTP call, and the first argument is always the URL. And in your test or in your code, you're always calling the same URL, but you're passing different uh, params or request bodies or something. Uh, in that case, uh, here's the function that takes URL and params. Uh, but in our test case, we just want to create a new version of that function. And I think for this case, it's kind of fine to use this shadowing of the vars. So in the led block, we kind of overrides the HTTP call function um, with the partial. So we won't have access to original HTTP call function inside the led block. But I think in this specific case, it's kind of fine. So what we can do here is we can do partial and then pass the URL that we want to call. And then in our test, we don't need to print this or provide this URL all the time. We can just use these params as we as we need them. So if we execute this block, we'll see two print statements. And you see that we always have the access to the URL and to the param. Moving next, um, 
I think I've covered that in one of my previous videos, I just want to mention that because it's kind of tricky to understand. So this juxt um, really rarely used function, but I've seen it in production code a couple times uh, where it needs. Uh, and it also really depends on uh, the input data because sometimes uh, it makes sense, sometimes it doesn't. So the easiest way to understand what the function is doing is to read this example here. So juxt of a, b, c on x will be, the, res uh, the result will be a vector applying function a to x, function b to x, and function c to x. Um, and after some uh, experimentations, you can start seeing how that works. So juxt a, b, if we just call that, it will be, a result will be a new function. And now we can apply that function. So let's say uh, def uh, juxt a, b, and we create this new function. And then we can call that function here, juxt a, b, and the result will be uh, a vector that will apply keyword on top of map. So if we apply a on top of map, we'll get the value of a. So the vector will be one and two, because the first element will be applying A, second element will be applying B. And if we call this, we see that the result is what we expect. So yeah, that's juxt. And the final one uh, regarding functions, uh, and probably the most tricky one to understand, and basically because it's really hard, especially to me, was to remember the order in which the composition of function works, uh, but let's see. So the com function, uh, and you can build um, a new function, that composition of the function that you pass in the comp. So let's say we have comp and then we have inc uh, a, let's say, I don't know, um, nothing but yeah, maybe tech. So result of this will be a function as well. And now we uh, uh, let's say we call it um, fn that gets a and do nothing because it's really do nothing to the value of a. So uh, if we call this and then we call fn uh, that gets a and do nothing and we call it on a1, um, we'll get one back. So really, if we want to write a, um, write it without comp, it will be something like uh, we call a on a1, then on top of that we do inc, then on top of that we do dec, so decrementing back to original value. And from, from this example, you can start understanding how to read this. So uh, if you provide, uh, if you call this function on top of value x, uh, this function will be called first on top of x, then this one will be called on the result of this previous call, and then this one will be called on the result of this previous two calls. Um, how that could be used? Uh, let's say you end up with a threading macro, and then you call map and then map here, and always you just pass the single fun function here. So really what you want is you, you can basically combine those two map calls into one and just create a new function that composition of these two. So again, on the most right uh, place in the comp, you put the, the first call, the uh, lookup by the key V, and then you call the increment on top of that. So result will be exactly the same, two, three, four, and here, uh, two, three, four. And just another example. So what I want to do here is I want to get a value A and I want to sum the array that inside that value. So what we can do is we can do a composition of A and let's start with just that. So we want like this. So it will be just an array. And then we want to sum that. 
So most beginners will do this mistake uh, and just add plus here. That won't work, unfortunately, because you'll get an error like this. And that's because if you do something like plus one, two, three, uh, it's not working because plus expe expects to have multiple arguments and it cannot work with array. So a uh, fix for that is to use function called apply. And that's actually another tricky function. But basically, uh, it takes this function and flattens this array into var arcs. So this function is now know how to work on these elements. So this will work. Six, right? But how we fix this? Uh, we want to change this plus to be apply plus. And here we can combine it with partial, actually. So we do partial, um, partial and plus, uh, partial apply plus, right? So partial apply plus will just get this and convert it into a function. And then this will be used on top of an array, and that's now working. So if we call this, we get six. If you still not getting this, I suggest you spend a bit of time and trying to understand this. Um, maybe that won't be too useful in your code, but it's definitely a good like um, brain exercise to, to go through. And as a bonus uh, to, to the video, not related to functions, but to something else, and you see see it in a sec. Um, so what, what's going on here? Let's say we have a let, and then we have an atom with zero. Then we have a collection, and then we have a map that we uh, uh, map through a range from zero to 100. We loop through that, and on each call, we do a, a side effect uh, operation, basically, and we increment the value in the in the atom. And if we remove this first call and we call this, um, you probably expect it to be nil uh, or zero because you know that map is lazy um, and this kind of won't be executed at all uh, because we never uh, ask for this collection to be resolved. If we call this, we see zero. Now, if we remove this comment, uh, we, what we do here is we're just getting first element from result of this uh, map over the range. And here, uh, if you know the answer or you think what's the correct answer, please put it in the comments. Uh, but for beginners, that could be a probably a surprise, because if you call this, you'll get 32. And this, this is because map is not truly uh, lazy and it evaluates things in chunks. So the chunk size, as you can see, is 32. So even if you're uh, only interested in the first uh, element for performance uh, optimizations, this map will take 32 elements from the range and apply this function. So that's why uh, be really careful if you use map to do some side effects. And if those side effects are uh, costly, it's like long HTTP calls, long um, database queries, uh, pulling a lot of data, and you are expecting to do that step by step. So make sure you don't do that mistake. And yeah, so that's all for the video. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something uh, new or it was useful for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, leave comments, and always uh, there is an option to support my work on Buy Me A Coffee and other resources, and all the links are in the description. Thanks a lot, have a nice day, bye-bye, and see you next one.